Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to first lecture of advanced taxation for June 2024 to March 2025 examination. The first topic is income tax. Now income tax you have covered it in your taxation in F6. Here this is just a quick revision for all those who must have forgotten or who remembers partially or who might have come to ATX through exemption and want to revisit the income tax computation once more. So this is a great chance and a great opportunity to brush up your knowledge of income tax once again. And you need, you need, you need the latest textbook of ATX. Why? Because the figures have changed. There are some figures that have changed. Okay, so make sure that you have the textbook from June 2024 to March 2025. And if you don't have the text and the kid, email me at accsaviakta.gmail.com and I will send you the link. Or go to the about section of my channel and go to ACCA materials and download the textbook and the kid. Now, here we are going to focus on the how income tax is calculated, all the pro forma and the layout you need to know, personal allowance, taxation of families and income tax planning scenarios. And we are going to have, we are going to practice questions under each of this. Okay. It's not a exam standard question, but it is, it is like, to make sure how well you are aware of it okay small questions we'll be having after each concept is taught so starting with income tax computation now this are some types of income which are taxable where you have to pay income tax like your property income your overseas income your employment income then Trading income, savings income, other taxable income. Remember, or whatever the types of income you have, either to your savings or trading or employment will be, they will be liable to the 2023-24 tax year. This is the latest tax year. So all of you who are going to watch my video and who are going to take the ATX exam in the future are going to go by this 2023-24 income tax. This is the tax year. Less any allowable deductions. We'll be having some allowable deductions that you can deduct from your income, which we're going to study later on. Okay. Now, what is the basis of assessment? Your income tax is payable on your taxable income for a tax year. This is how it's calculated. And for June 2024, September 2024, December 2024 and March 2025 examinations, the tax year is going to be 2023-24. So your tax year runs from 6 April 2023 to 5th April 2024. You must remember this. Now, Either you might be taxed as individuals, okay, you could be married. See, even if you are married, you are not taxed as a couple. You are taxed separately on your own separate incomes, okay. Now, taxable income. So now, you will be presented with a pro forma income tax computation. Here, you are going to classify your income. And also the rates of income tax will be given to you. You need to know the rates and how income is classified. You can't write all the incomes aggregate and write just one figure. No, you have to classify your income. So this is the pro forma. First, you need to write that it's an income tax. Why? Because there are various type of taxes which we are going to study later on. Inheritance tax, capital gain tax, corporation tax, VAT. That's why. 
So income tax is the first type of tax. A tax that is charged on your income. It could be any type of income. So you need to write a proper heading. You're going to get one mark for it. You're going to get your professional mark for writing it. Income tax computation. And the year is very important. Which year are we in? 2023-24. Okay. And keep a column for notes. So first is your earned income. Any income you can write in any order. Doesn't matter. So under earned income, you have your employment income. You have your trading profit. You have your other earned income. Wherever I have kept notes, later on I will explain you the notes. Why there is a note. Then under savings income, we have interest received and interest received. One is gross, one is net. When you are receiving interest received gross, means tax has not been deducted from it. But when it is net, tax has been deducted from it and given to you. Very less interest are deducted. I mean, very less interest are received net. Most of it are received gross. Okay. And when it is received net, the tax that is deducted it is tax that is deducted is 20%. Always 20%. That's why it's 100 divided by 80. You need to. What are you doing? When it is received net, you are grossing it up. Okay. You multiply it by 100, divide by 80 because 20% tax was deducted. There is a no 3 to it. Then we have investment income. Under investment income, we have property income, other types of investment income. Then we have dividend income. Don't worry, we are going to study each of these types of income in detail later on in the later lectures. So dividend income, dividend received from UK companies, other dividends. Then we have total income. From total income, we are going to deduct any types of reliefs. There are various types of reliefs. Okay, qualifying loan interest. Why qualifying loan interest is some interest on loan you can deduct. It is known as qualifying. We'll learn what is the definition of qualifying. Not all the loan interest, only qualifying loan interest you can deduct and only the gross amount. Then any loss reliefs. Then we are going to have the net income. Very important that one must know what is total income, what is net income. There's a difference. Okay. After net income, from net income only, you need to deduct personal allowance. And this is fixed for this year. The amount hasn't changed from the previous year. We'll see. And then it's your taxable income. Remember, tax is always charged on your taxable income, not on your total income, not on your net income. Taxable income. So this is a pro forma. Make sure that you download this slide. Okay. You can email me at accsubjects.gmail.com and get the link of the slides or go to the above section of my channel and go to ATX lecture and download the slides. But make sure you download the slides with you because it will help you to learn this performer and all. Now, then we are coming to the income tax at relevant rates. Rates are given. This year's rates. We'll see the rates a little bit later. First, let's finish this performer. It has not yet been over. It's a long performer. But in ATX, you will not have to draw this long performer. This has been already done in your tax level. Here, it is just a revision. Okay. So income tax, from your income tax, you can deduct marriage allowance if you have any. Then you can deduct other types of reliefs like EIS, SEIS and VCT. This will not be tested in depth in ATX, but knowing it is good. What is EIS, SEIS and VCT? These are some type of reliefs for entrepreneurs. EIS is for entrepreneurs. SEIS is for like agricultural worker, you can say. And VCT is for venture capital. So EIS is 30%, SEIS is 50 and VCT is 30. You can Google it and check just to know a brief things. You don't have to know in depth. Just know the percentage 30, 50 and 30. Then double taxation relief. If you are doing an overseas transaction. Then income tax liability. After this, any tax credit you deduct. 
and income tax payable. Remember, income tax liability and income tax payable are different. Income tax liability, you don't deduct tax credit. And if you deduct tax credit, it becomes income tax payable. Make sure in your exam, you know what has been asked from you. Liability or payable. So you need to remember this. Okay. Remember in your taxable income, all the incomes are gross. Any exempt income is not there. Okay. It's excluded. These are the exempt income. You need to know the exempt income as well. ISA. Any income from individual savings account don't include. And national saving and interest saving certificate interest okay nsia saving certificate interest exclude interest on repayment of tax exclude statutory redundancy payment exclude scholarship income exclude gaming lottery or premium bond winnings exclude they are exempt sometimes you'll be given this also along your other incomes like dividend or non savings or savings do not include it and any state benefits that is paid for example due to accident or any sickness or disability like that are exempt now remember the notes that i have put in the computation table now i will explain you what each note means starting with other earned income note one other earned income includes this for example if you have received any pension this you have earned you know from your for former employment then any state pensions then any profits from furnished holiday accommodation what is furnished holiday accommodation we'll study it when we go there when we study profit holiday accommodation furnished holiday accommodation when we study it i will explain you but any profit from that is also your income then second note was interest received gross see these are the interest that is received gross most of it are gross your bank and building society interest guild a security interest ns and i bank interest interest from quoted corporate bonds issued by uk resident companies are gross then any foreign interest gross of overseas tax suffered now what is net interest that are received net interest from unquoted if it's quoted is gross unquoted corporate bonds issued by uk resident company to individuals this is a net then interest from any interest in possession trust iib trust net what are other types of investment income note 4 annuity income in annuity only the income element is there you can take as investment income then non savings income from iib trust this also this also comes under investment income why is 100 divided by 80 because it is net it has been received net you have to gross it up discretionary trust income even this was net what percentage was deducted what tax was deducted 45 percent that and that is the additional rate tax right that's why we are grossing it up into 100 divided by 55 because 45 tax has been deducted. 45 is the additional rate tax. Then other foreign income. Dividends from a real estate investment trust. IID. The short form of real estate investment trust. This is also investment income and it is received net. That's why you're grossing it up into 100 divided by 80. 20% is deducted. Everything is 20% only. Whenever it's net means 20%. Multiply by 100 divided by 80. It's fixed except for discretionary trust income, which is 45% tax has been deducted. Now, other dividend income. So under other dividend income, dividends from an IP trust. Okay, here it's into 100 divided by 91.25. That means how much tax has been deducted? 8.75, the basic rate. Always basic rate is reduced. Because this is dividend, remember this is dividend, you can't deduct 
dividends basic rate is 8.75 for this year foreign dividend next note note 6 we have qualifying loan interest and loss relief this will be covered later in detail okay but there's a maximum amount that you can deduct for this there's a deduction there's a limitation how much you can deduct how much of the loss relief you can deduct how much of the qualified loan interest so the maximum amount that can be deducted is the greater of and this you need to deduct from the total income we have seen that in the table no total income is the greater of 50,000 or 25 percent of adjusted total income whichever is greater of this two up to that you can deduct your loss relief or qualifying loan interest more than this you can't more details of the maximum restrictions will be given later next note 7 your personal allowance for this year is 12 12,570. This hasn't changed from the previous year. Previous tax year also, it was the same. But this personal allowance can be deducted to nil under some conditions. So, this is the rate of income tax for 2023 24. If you notice this table carefully, one thing has changed here. Everything else is 7, 20%, 40%, 45%, 8.75, 33.75, 39.35%. Then the basic rate band is up to 37,700 is same. One thing changed. What is it? The higher rate. Higher rate band has gone down. Before earlier, if you remember, it was up to 150,000. So this is the first year, okay, that they have reduced the higher rate band earlier it was up to 150,000 more than 150 was additional rate now the limit is 125,000 and 140 see there so your basic rate is first 37,700 then your higher rate is from 37,701 to 125,140 the change has taken place there that's why I tell you please refer the latest textbook your earlier textbook will show you 150,000 still. But in the latest textbook, this has been updated. So that has, that has changed in the syllabus. And beyond 125, 141, it is additional rate. Everything else is same percentage wise 20, 40, 45. For savings and non savings and dividend is 8.75 basic rate, 33.75 higher rate, 39.35 additional rate. Now, Tax income in the following order. First, non-savings. Second, savings. Third, dividend. The way it is presented to you. This is how any, when you write in a column also, first column is non-savings, second column is savings, third column is dividend. Okay. Why? Because in terms of tax planning, this is beneficial. That's why. We'll see later how. So, you can extend this basic and higher rate band. How? And when you extend, it is always the gross amount you extend it, not the net amount. Even if it's net, you have to gross it up. And then you extend the basic and the higher rate. How? If you make PPC, any personal pension scheme contribution, if you make, or remember it has to be personal, not occupational, personal pension scheme contribution. And if you make any gift aid donation, under these two conditions, you can extend the band. But remember, Donation to charity by an individual. This will not be asked in your ATX exam. By an individual. Gifted donation, yes, but not by an individual. So don't worry about it. Now, next note, note 9. If you are married, okay, marriage allowance is up to 1,260. This is fixed. You can't go beyond this. That means up... From your personal allowance, only 1260 can be transferred to your spouse. 10. Relief under EIS, SEIS and VCD. These are schemes, various type of schemes. EIS is for entrepreneur. SEIS is for agriculture farmer because it is seed EIS. S stands for seed. Seed entrepreneur investment scheme. And VCT is venture capital. 
and 11 DT, DTR. This is how you treat your overseas income. Let me tell you in brief what double taxation relief means. Double taxation means when you are when you're having overseas income, okay? There are two options. Either you pay tax only in one country and in the other country you are totally exempt from tax. Or the other one is getting tax credit. Tax credit means if you have paid tax, let's say you have an overseas income and you have paid the tax there in the overseas. Now here when you are paying, you are asked to pay the tax again in that same income in your home country, you are only paying the difference. The amount that you have paid there, so you are going to pay only the difference. You are not going to pay the entire amount twice. It will not be taxed. Only the difference will be taxed. You are going to get some, some uh, relief. Let's say your home country tax is 30% and overseas you have only paid 20% tax. So the difference is 10%. That 10% tax you will pay in your home country rather than paying 20 there and 30 here again. That is known as another way of double taxation relief. Okay. 12. Note number 12. Most type of savings and dividends are received gross. So your tax, so your only tax credit is pay. Pay as you earn. Okay, this will be given to you. Don't worry. If there is any pay, examiner will give you. So this is the only tax credit that you can see will be deducted to calculate your income tax payable. Now let's go from notes to rate of tax on savings. So savings will be taxed exactly the same way non, like non-savings. Basic, higher, additional. Basic 20%, higher, uh, sorry, higher 40 and additional 45. Same as non-savings. But there's a difference. For savings, there's an advantage. What is it? Your first 5,000 of your taxable income will be taxed at 0%. This is known as starting rate of tax. This is applicable only for savings. It is not there for non-savings. First 5,000 of your taxable income, if it falls in the savings category, will be taxed at 0%. This is known as starting date. So, basic rate and higher rate taxpayers they are entitled to the savings income nil rate band there is another thing known as savings income nil rate band nil rate band means your savings income will be taxed at zero percent this is only for basic and higher additional rate taxpayer will not get this benefit what is the savings income nil rate band for basic rate that means first 1000 of your savings will be taxed at zero for higher rate, first 500 of the savings will be taxed as 0%. You will understand when we do calculations. If you are not understanding now, don't worry. Don't panic. And additional nil. Additional is always nil. Now, but we, when we are taxing, okay, savings income is always taxed after the non-savings. First, you finish off with the non-savings. Then you start taxing the savings. So whatever you're going to tax the savings income will depend on your non-savings income. This is the procedure. First calculate income tax on non-savings. Then apply the different rate of tax on the savings in the following order. This order needs to be followed. From non-savings, when you come to savings, first see whether you have any starting rate or not. See whether savings income new rate ban will be applicable or not. Then the normal rate. For starting, then nil rate, then normal. Basic, higher, addition. Now, starting date. We'll give an example how starting date will apply. Let's say, but the starting rate you will only get in very limited situations, not everywhere. Let's say your whole income is 5,000, less than 5,000. Okay? Your non saving income is less than 5,000. Then it's possible you can get the starting date. Why? First 5,000 of taxable income. So, let's say you have no non-savings income. Whatever you have is only savings. The first 5,000 of savings will be taxed at 0% now. Then, let's say second situation. 
where you have some saving non savings but it's below 5000 let's say you have 3000 out of your 5000 income 3000 is non savings so the remaining 2000 will be taxed as 0% and let's say your non savings income is more than 5000 then you will not have this uh, starting rate it's not applicable for starting uh, for savings now after starting rate is over let's focus our attention towards nil rate ban savings income nil rate ban here if you are a basic rate taxpayer see this you will decide based on your taxable income you will see the amount where it falls is it in the first 37700 or between 37,700 to 125, 140, or more than 125, 140. Depending on that, you will decide. So, if you are a basically taxpayer, first 1,000 will be taxed as 0%. First 1,000 means the savings income. If you are a higher rate, then your 500 will fall in the 500 of savings income will be taxed as 0%. And if you are an additional rate taxpayer, that means your taxable income is more than 125, 140. This is not applicable no income nil rate ban next now so see to decide whether you are a basic higher or additional just see the highest tax ban that you fall into for example you have a taxable income of 45,000 okay 45,000 falls in the category of between 37701 to 125 140 you are a higher rate you are a higher rate taxpayer. You will be counted as a higher rate taxpayer. Now, normal rates. After that, the third situation is the normal rate. Apply 20, 40, 45. So, if you are basic rate, first 37,700 is 20%, then 40%, then 45%. Now, remember, your basic rate and higher rate ban will be first utilized by non savings then savings and then dividends it is not the other way around don't change this order first is always non savings then savings then dividend why because from the point of tax saving this is most beneficial because non savings income does not have any benefit like savings income has it does not have a nil rate ban it does not have a starting rate unlike savings income savings income still has it otherwise your non-savings non income will fall in the category of higher and additional rate that means you have to pay more tax now remember so always assume this is beneficial that's why non-saving savings and then dividend okay So then in your examination, this is very important guys, in the exam, always indicate the rate at which income is taxed. Even if it is 0%, you have to write it. Even if it is exempt, you have to write it that this income is exempt from income tax. Why? Even if it is 0, it shows your income is taxable. You will be given marks for it. If you don't write that 0%, if you don't, if you just ignore because something is exempt, exempt income, you cannot be given marks for it you are throwing away valuable marks please don't do it please do yourself a favor and write it now let's go to dividends we are finished with non savings and savings dividend also one thing has changed earlier if you see financial at 2022 dividend the first 2000 of dividend was taxed at 0% that means it's tax free now this year financial act 2023 has changed it from 2000 to 1000 now only the first 1000 of your dividend will be tax free that means it's known as dividend nil rate ban how we have savings nil rate ban here we have dividend nil rate ban but we don't have anything for non savings okay this is the way basic rate Higher rate band, additional rate band will remain the same. Only the percentage changes when it's dividend. 8.75, 33.75, 39.35. You don't have to memorize this. This table will be given to you on the day of your exam. Right? It will be given to you in examination sheet. But if you remember, it's easier for you to do your calculations faster rather than each type keep on referring the table. Okay? So now, 
after non sufficient savings only you start taxing dividend so first 1000 of dividend income is always taxed at 0% it does not matter whatever your your income is you could be a basic rate pay rate you could be higher rate taxpayer or you could be an additional rate taxpayer irrespective of that first 1000 is always taxed at 0% this is different from savings income nil rate ban how your savings income nil rate ban is always dependent on your taxable income okay that's what i've told you and also starting rate is only applicable in limited circumstances nil rate ban depend on your tax position then so when you're taxing the dividend at nil rate remember it reduces the basic rate and high rate bit for the remaining dividend income okay now then after taxing first 1000 at zero whatever dividend is remaining will be then taxed at the rate set out in the table 8.75 33.75 and 39.35 now before we move on to the qualifying loan interest let's do questions on non saving savings and dividend we'll tax them and see how we calculate the income tax on the three types of income test your understanding one so we are going to do three questions test your understanding one and two and illustration one now how to do this question this question you need to attempt on a cb platform as i told you from day one make sure that you practice on your computer rather than doing it on a paper because your exam is going to be computer based so open a blank workspace as you can see i've done here blank workspace go to adx subject select from your acca website and go to blank workspace it will look like this there will be nothing here it's all blank okay this is just a layout all you need is just this spreadsheet to do your calculation or the word processor to type your answer okay so copy paste your questions on the word processor and start doing it on your spreadsheet here yeah, that's how i've done it so all the questions i've copy pasted here as you can see and now i'm going to open my spreadsheet this is how it will look like i'm going to attempt the question here so let's start with test understanding one you have been given the bank interest of 6000 then you have been given the three types of the income tax pay assuming she also has an employment so all this all these three are her employment income abc okay and also the pay given with the bank interest now bank interest is a savings income no dividend so let's quickly do this first you need to divide this into separate category you need to take the non savings in the non savings column savings in the savings column and dividend if you have any in the dividend column and total it up before we calculate the tax so first let's start with this description okay first you need to write the heading what are we calculating income tax so just write income tax computation income tax computation for which year 2023-24 exactly same way you have to do for all the question okay i can make this bigger i'll make this bold remember your professional skill marks are there for your format so it's very important that you make your heading stand out by making it bold or highlight the cell or whatever you want to do it then since you have three then you have to clearly label under a okay a when you're having your employment income of employment income at 15 150 at this level comma you can even add the currency 
how do you add the currency go to here symbol and add it's in pound so insert Fifteen one fifty. Okay, employment income of fifteen at this. So now we are going to have clearly label the columns. Very important. Write non savings. Non. savings income then we are going to write savings income since we have no dividend here we are not going to write any dividend column then the last one will be total keep the total a little bigger okay center align and make it bold done all this will be in pounds okay you can add the currency here just drag it copy paste here okay done now so employment income Actually, this will go a little up, but it's okay. We'll keep it here. Employment income is fifteen one fifty. It will go under non savings. Then we are going to write bank interest. Bank interest six thousand. It will go in the savings. And when you are doing the total, just do the sum function. Take all the column enter and just drag this down. Now we are going to have income. So total income when you do just do the sum function. Take both the columns enter so that later you can copy paste it to the other cell. Done. Here, when you are taking the sum, you should have taken both the center. Okay. Now, remember, from total income, you need it, you need to deduct your personal allowance (PA). You don't have any reliefs or qualifying interest, so you are not going to have any net income directly from total income. Deduct personal allowance, which is Twelve five seventy. You need to remember the figure. From what you have to deduct first. Always deduct PA from non savings first. Minus twelve five seventy. Just keep the minus here. Twelve five seventy. No. You have an undo button here. Just click here. Just copy, paste. Okay. Now, next is what taxable income. So when you're doing the taxable income, just do the sum function. Just take it to the other side. You see. You have got your taxable income now. The tax. This is the income. You need to calculate income tax. So here, income tax. I'm going to start with non savings. Non. Just copy paste rather than typing it. So this saves time. Non savings. First, always with basic rate. 
remember this entire amount is less than 5000 okay but first it will be taxed at basic rate because this is non savings so this when you're copy pasting it here you can't paste because it has a function attached to it it will paste it as zero so when you are pasting it see how i do it undo copy when you have a function performed to it and you are copy pasting it go to paste special and everything needs to be unmarked you can click if you want just the value just the number click value if you want it with the form formula you can take with the formula okay whatever let's take value okay now you are going to take 20 percent just write 20 percent here here just take this into this enter you see entire amount went so now this amount if you see it is less than 5000 so the first 5000 they say will be taxed as zero percent for the first 5000 of taxable income out of which 2580 when the balance will be taxed as zero percent remember when you're taking the savings income after non-savings start with the starting rate see whether it is applicable here it is ap applicable because non-savings income itself is less than 5000 whenever this is less than 5000 you are going to have the starting rate of savings so savings just copy paste here see so these are small little little techniques which helps you to save time okay rather than cop writing every time typing every time try to copy paste wherever you can even the sentences so here always write which rate starting rate starting rate you want to take the balance right so just say equal 5000 minus this amount and this will be taxed at zero percent no need to do anything just drag this down automatically functions will be copy pasted done write this amount just take the sum function this two should be adding up to 5000 now the balance now what is the next see whether savings whether you are going to be having any savings nil rate ban yes you will have it because this is basic rate so again i'm going to copy paste this paste but this time it is not starting rate. it is savings nil rate ban. no need to write savings nil rate ban sentence just write savings nil rate ban the initials will do it how much basic rate basic rate will have thousand at zero percent thousand nil rate ban at zero percent so just copy paste here paste see here there's no need next we have then we are going to apply the basic rate so nil rate is over starting rate is over okay copy paste make sure you make this little bigger paste it is not the starting it is the basic rate okay how much see how much if you want to know the balance take this minus 5000 and minus 1000 done because 5000 you have utilized and 1000 you have utilized so the balance is 2580 okay this will be taxed at 20 percent just drag this done okay now take the sum function 
enter so this is the income tax liability this uh, 1032 to get income tax payable you need to deduct your payee less tax credit your tax credit is payee which is it's given here how much 516 so for all the others also you have to do same minus 516 just put a minus figure to it so that you can easily do the sum function This is income tax. If you want your answers to stand out, either you can make this bold or C. You can color this cell. Okay. For example, let's put yellow. You can do like this. This shows that this is your main answer. Okay. Now that's done so exactly on the same table so that this saves a lot of time i'm going to do it with the second employment income that is 29650 let's see what happens and pay is 3416 everything else remains the same i'm just going to go and change the figure here i'm sure you can do the labeling by yourself change the employment income and all those things so let's quickly change this figure 29650 done automatically everything else will change bank interest will remain the same personal allowance will remain the same now your taxable income is this okay so on this we'll take here we'll take this figure copy paste special the value okay and just take 20 percent of it it's done we are not going to have the starting rate this time because first 5000 falls in the non saving itself but we are going to have the nil rate ban starting rate is not there nil rate ban is there how much still 1000 because he's a basic rate taxpayer look at here you need to look the total taxable income to decide that so nil rate ban is 1000 will be taxed as zero which is zero okay now next basic rate so this 6000 out of the 6000 1000 goes what's remaining 5000 right so just change this figure to 5000 done it's at 20 percent automatically the number changes so automatically this is calculated and you deduct your pay this time is minus 4416 done No, it's uh, 3416. I'm sorry. So, your income tax payable is 1000 this time. Then, now the third scenario where your employment income is, let's go here 46,000 and pay is 6686. Let's do that. So, we'll change this to 46,000 everything else remains the same personal allowance will be same bank interest will be same now this is your taxable income with this taxable income the entire amount 33430 will be taxed at 20 percent so it is this amount you are going to have you're not going to have the starting rate because first 5000 falls here nil rate ban yes because he's a additional rate now sorry higher rate not a basic rate more than 37 700 so now he's a bit higher because he's higher nil rate ban will fall to 500 from thousand sorry 500 i'm sorry so out of 6500 is taxed at zero the balance but remember before knowing the balance also some portion of saving will be taxed at basic some of it will be at addition higher okay So now 500. Remember, savings at basic rate. How much? Uh, 
एस एन आर बी now here just take the total the total of needs to be 37700 this is the basic rate 500 goes so the balance okay so take this minus this minus this center out of this Okay, this one is taxed at twenty percent. Just copy paste it here. Now, the additional. How much? Thirty-nine. So here, if you want to know this, this minus the basic. How much is the balance? One seven three. This is at higher rate. At what person? Forty. And just change the pay to six 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 six. So your total this one is one double four six. Income tax payable. Isn't it very easy? Keep doing it until you get comfortable doing it. at a high speed you know the rates how to apply in which order all those things are very important and it matters a lot then the next let's go to illustration 1 here he has employment income of 55 and dividend of 6 not he doesn't have anything of savings only non savings and dividend let's quickly do the income tax payable So let's do that. Now, let's go here and change fifty-five thousand, and dividends is six thousand. This time, it is not savings; it is dividend. Okay, never mind the spelling, and everything else remains the same. You need to deduct personal allowance from non-savings only, so this will be your taxable income. He's a higher rate, so this will be taxed at forty-two four thirty. Will be taxed at twenty percent. I'm sorry, because he's a higher rate, up to the basic thirty-seven seven hundred will be taxed at twenty percent. Then the balance. This is non-savings. Higher it. Just take this and minus this. The balance will be taxed at forty percent. Then we have dividends. Dividend, irrespective of taxable income, first one thousand at zero percent. So this is dividend nil rate ban. One thousand at zero percent. Then first the last five thousand will be at higher rate because basic rate went under non savings only. So five five thousand will be taxed at higher rate. What is the higher rate for say uh, dividend thirty three point seven five. Just drag it. See when you want to round this to a whole figure, just go here. Go to custom. Go here and select the zero only under all. You see.
So just do a sum function here. Around this, go here, go here and click custom and okay. From here, deduct your pay, which is 9432. Minus 9432. Round this. Go here, custom and zero. Okay. 1688 is the income tax payable. Now let us go to test understanding 2. Here we have all the three non savings property income savings bank interest and dividend so let's do 42 and 10500 let's quickly do that this is savings we can't insert a cell like how we do in a normal excel okay in your cb platform so here the total and dividend okay just change the figure so property is Property income is non savings 40,000. Then saving is 2,000. Dividend is 10,500. Let's do a sum function. Drag it down. Now, total income. Take all this and enter. Done. Now, personal allowance. <clears throat> Less personal allowance, which is 12,570. We'll deduct from non savings minus 12,570. This will take in the total also. Cop copy, paste. Then we are going to have taxable income. Since I have put minus, it's saying a name, so less PA. And then we'll have taxable income. Taxable income is the sum, total income, less personal allowance. Just see, your life becomes way much easier when you do questions on Excel calculation it's very easy so non savings at basic rate this falls in basic rate only but if you look at the total is a higher rate but this non savings is less than 37700 so entire amount 27 430 will be taxed at 20 This. This. Next savings. Ne starting rate he will not have because 5000 falls here, but nil rate, yes, because he's a higher, so only 500. Savings. Savings 
nail rail band okay 500 at 0 percent next remember if you take this amount and add 500 still some portion of basic rate is there so here you are going to have savings income basic rate We are going to take 37,700 because that's the basic rate limit and deduct this and this and down. Okay, I'm so sorry. If you see the savings, it's only 2,000 out of which 500 is taxed at zero. So the remaining 1,500 will be taxed at 20% now dividend 1000 irrespective of the taxable income is at 0% dividend nil dividend nil rate ban zero percent then from here 1000 went now still if you add this and this still it is less than 37700 that means some portion of basic rate is still there from dividend which can be taxed at 20 percent uh, i mean the basic rate we need to find that out Is dividend at basic rate so here if you want to find that out 37 700 minus you need to put a bracket here okay um, minus this minus this minus this and minus this 7 to 70 this will be taxed at basic rate what is the basic rate of dividend 8.75 percent this will round it up how go here go to custom and press ok next out of 10 500 1000 is at nil rate this one is at basic rate the balance is at higher rate okay how much take this from here deduct thousand and deduct this amount this will be taxed at higher rate what is the higher rate 33.75 now take the total seven one seven five this is your income tax liability when you have no pay given to you your income tax liability is only your income tax payable okay so that's it and now let us go to qualifying loan interest qualifying loan interest so qualifying loan interest means when you are taking any loan you have to pay interest on that right so the interest that you are paying on that loan you're going to get a relief for it 
how not interest on any loan that interest you are paying on a loan that loan you are taking is incurred to finance expenditure for a qualifying purpose that purpose needs to be qualifying purpose for which you are taking the loan and interest that you are paying should be at a reasonable commercial rate then only you can deduct it from your total income otherwise you can't amounts that you are paying in excess let's say your commercial rate is 5% you are paying interest at 6% that excess 1% it's not allowable you are not going to get relief on that excess only up to the reason commercial rate now the interest that you are paying the qualifying loan interest is paid gross okay so whatever the amount you are paying you are going to get a relief against total income relief means you can deduct it from your total income to bring down your income so that your tax reduces but when you are deducting it this deduction is subject to maximum deduction there's an amount up to which you can deduct more beyond that you can't deduct okay so here the main types of qualifying purpose we'll go through what are those qualifying purpose for which if you take a loan the interest of that will be deductible number one if you are taking it for the partnership okay so the contribution of a capital into a partner let's say you are taking a loan to contribute into a partnership including limited liability partnership not just unlimited but limited liability partnership as well that loan the interest on that loan is deductible and a loan made by a partner for the purchase of plant and machinery for use in the partnership year of purchase and the next 3 years when you are purchasing it and the next 3 years also tax deductible you can deduct it the interest can be deductible next personal representatives personal representatives means the payment of inheritance tax on the deceased personal state when you are as a, a representative for the deceased person you have to pay an inheritance tax right on his, on the dead person's state you are going to get a relief for it but relief is only for one year third qualifying purpose is employee controlled companies this is available remember this relief is only for full time employees full time employees who takes loan to acquire ordinary shares in an employee controlled could be uk or ee resident unquoted trading company please when you are studying conditions make sure the conditions are read by word by word each condition needs to be satisfied in that one sentence it can't be quoted company and then full time employee or half time employee but unquoted no it needs to be full time employee also uk or ee resident also and unquoted trading company also three conditions satisfied then you are taking a loan you are going to get a relief okay now next again if the individual has claimed either eis or sais relief in respect of the share purchase let's say you have purchased a share and you are already claiming eis or sais relief you are not going to get this relief the income the interest qualifying loan interest relief you are not going to get either one of the two you can get both the reliefs remember tax has been designed in such a way the uk tax they will only give you relief for one they will never give you relief for more than one where you are applicable for let's say two or three reliefs only one relief is applicable bear this in mind okay this or that not both fourth and the last last qualifying purpose there's there are only four qualifying purpose is close companies this close company is a big chapter which we are going to study towards the end of the atx syllabus another uh, once again we'll study but briefly just know what close companies is okay so when you are purchasing an ordinary share okay or loan or when you are giving a loan to a close but trading company not any company not close any company close trading company or a company in ea which could be a close trading company if it was situated in uk then 
interest is deductible. Following conditions must be satisfied. Number one, this is for closed company, okay? The individual with associates owns at least 5% of the ordinary share capital at the time the interest is paid. Remember, when you're paying the interest, you have to own at least 5%. It should not be less than 5% of ordinary share capital. Next, the individual owns some shares in the company at the time the interest is paid. You should own some share when you're paying the interest. Otherwise, you're not going to get the relief. During the period and see, at the time the interest is paid and during the period from the purchase of the share until the payment of the interest they must have worked for the greater part of time the actual management of the company or an associate company you must have worked there for more part greater part of your time then only that relief is there next again if for close company also if you have claimed eis or sis relief you are not going to get the interest relief now how the royalties are treated now see patent or copyright royalties are payable for trading purpose okay Th these are an allowable deduction when you're calculating a registered trading profit of a business you can deduct this patent royalties or copyright royalties which are for trading purpose because mostly patent and copyright are for trading purposes only that's why you can deduct this from your registered trading profit and they are calculated on an equal basis copied royalties are always paid gross at patent royalties are paid net net of what i told you net of basic rate that is 20 percent remember patent royalty okay the collection of basic rate tax on patent royalty will not be asked third part of this lecture personal allowances this you should know personal allowances means from a, from each tax year a person an individual is allowed to this they can deduct this from their income and it's a fixed amount there's a limit every year it changes or sometimes it remains fixed also every year this year it has been same like the last year every taxpayer even children are allowed they are entitled to this personal allowance for 2023-24 it is 12570 good news is, is the same as previous year personal allowance did not change sometimes government might increase it sometimes they might reduce it okay it's their choice 12570 there is no restriction to this personal allowance let's say the indi individual was might be alive for only part of the tax year or they are born uh let's say in june but they, are, they will be entitled to the personal allowance for, for that whole one tax year. They are not going to reduce your personal allowance just because you are alive for only part of the year. No. Full allowance will be available. Even in the tax year of birth or death. After that, yes. Basic personal allowance. Okay. So this is deducted from the net income of the taxpayer. From the different sources of income in the most beneficial order. We have done questions, right? Illustration 1, test understanding 1 and 2. We have seen that we have deducted personal allowance in these cases. First from non-saving, second from savings, third from dividend. Because in most cases, this is beneficial order. But sometimes this might not be the case. In that case, you can choose. And what about surplus, surplus personal allowance? Let's say your income is less than personal allowance. Let's say your income is 11,000. But your personal allowance is 12,570. You can only deduct 11,000. So that balance, 12,570 minus 11,000 is lost. Right? Surplus personal allowance are normally lost. You can't carry it forward. That's the disadvantage of it. Now you can set it, set it against your capital gain. You can't even transfer it to the other taxpayer also. It is lost. But for if you are a married couple, if you have married, husband and wife can transfer among themselves. Personal allowance. Maximum of 1260 can be transferred to your spouse. This is known as marriage allowance. And
and personal allowance can be reduced it cannot be increased but it can be reduced for high income individuals when does your personal allowance starts reducing it starts reducing when your income is more than 100000 the moment your income starts increasing from 100000 onwards personal allowance keeps reducing and there's a fix there's a formula for it how to calculate that reduction this is based on taxpayers an ani adjusted net income please remember the word adjusted net income net income and adjusted net income are not the same and this is calculated like this from your net income See so your net income. You know how to calculate from your pro forma. Go back to the pro forma and see how net income is calculated. After that, if you have made any gift aid donation, deduct it. But at ATX, it will not be asked. Any personal pension contribution, deduct it. After that, whatever is the answer is your A A N I. You have to take this. then this amount see whether it is going beyond 100000 or not your a ani this is the formula whatever your ani if it's more than 100000 let's say 200000 so 200000 minus 100 into 50% this is the formula it's always minus 100000 that minus 100000 is fixed and into 50% and you can round it up you can round up or round down okay let's say a taxpayer with an ani in excess of 125140 in excess of this amount this is also the figure for additional tax rate to payer right if you are having an income of more than 125140 you are not going to have any basic personal allowance your personal allowance will be zero how calculate it by yourself and check Calculate it by yourself and check. One twenty-five, one forty. Put it in A N I minus one hundred thousand into fifty percent. It will be more than. It will be twelve five seventy, I suppose. Yes, let's, let's do it. It's twelve five seventy. If it's exactly at one twenty-five, one forty minus hundred into fifty is one. it's it's the amount of the personal allowance 12570 exactly the amount of person so if it's beyond that that means more than 12570 you can't reduce a personal allowance more than 12570 because pa itself is 12570 more than that you can't reduce it can't go to negative that's why anything beyond 125 140 personal allowance is zero if it's 125 140 personal allowance is zero if it's less than 125 140 personal allowance will be not zero but it will be less it will reduce now so the effective rate of tax on income between 100000 and 125 140 is therefore 60% how it's made up like this because you are a higher rate so higher rate tax will be 40 and the personal allowance that you have lost which is 20% you have lost 20 so 40 and 20 makes 60% even if you don't understand this it's fine okay now So what happens when taxpayers are near this margin? Here, if you are near that margin, they might want to make additional gift aid or personal pension contribution. Why? So that they can keep their adjusted net income below hundred thousand, so that they can get the full amount of personal allowance. No one wants to reduce their PA, right? So by through making more gift aid donation or personal pension contribution, you can deduct your A and I keep it below hundred thousand and get the full personal allowance. This is how you are going to allocate your personal allowance, non savings, savings, and dividend. But 
if you find that it's not the most beneficial order then see which might be the most beneficial order okay for example you might first take it against dividend income you might choose to deduct personal allowance from dividend income first before savings why you might do that because you might want to take the advantage of the savings income nil rate band and starting rate for savings dividend anyway 1000 will be taxed as 0 percent so whatever the balance you try to get it deducted through your personal allowance and the balance if you're having a, any savings income you can take the advantage but first if you deduct from your savings you're not going to get any advantage when it comes to dividend because dividend only has the star, a thousand has zero percent but the thousand is not dependent on anything that's why it's better when you're having savings and dividend first to deduct personal allowance from dividend and then savings because savings has more advantages it has income nil rate band it has the starting rate for savings which is not there for dividend now let's do questions on personal allowance so we have four questions test understanding three four and five and illustration two starting with test understanding three you only need to calculate the taxable income not the income tax here we have annual salary of 130 made personal pension contribution of 19,000. So this is a clear example of reduction of personal allowance. Why? You see your income is more than 100,000. We'll see how much. So we'll open the spreadsheet. Right here the employment income 130,000. You need to deduct your personal allowance. But by how much? It's not 12,570. Personal allowance will now reduce from 12,570 up to an amount. That amount we need to find out. Whether it is zero or an amount more than zero so i am quickly going to open a working here like this so here i am going to write the basic personal allowance 12,570 then from 130,000 i am going to deduct 19,000 why 130 is your net income so you don't have any other source of income so your employment income is equal to your total income is equal to your net income okay so 130 minus your personal pension contribution of 19 if you see your adjusted net income is triple 1000 it's more than 100,000 but less than 125 140 so your personal allowance will not be zero but an amount less more than zero so we are now going to apply the formula from here you deduct minus 100,000 because that's the uh, formula right a and i minus 100 into 50 which is 11,000 did, if you take 50% of 11,000, it is 5,500. Remember, 5,500 is not the personal allowance. It is the amount by how much your personal allowance will reduce. So this amount you need to deduct from 12,570 and get your personal allowance, new personal allowance, which is 7070. So this 7070, I'm going to copy paste here and deduct it from 130,000. See, earlier I deducted 19,000 personal pension contribution from 130 to find my adjusted net income well this all the steps we had to do to get a new personal allowance once we do then we are going to deduct this from our employment income why to get our taxable income because that's what the question asked right so 130 minus 70 70 this is your new personal allowance next question test understanding four here also here we have to calculate income tax liability so it's a full question we have employment income of 137 bank interest of 22 300 and dividend of 17000 looking at the figure if you add this three it will be more than 100000 even more than 125 140 so personal allowance by looking at it you can come to a conclusion that personal allowance is going to be zero so we'll quickly write this and find the income tax okay so let's quickly do that. Now, we'll go quickly go here in my previous table and change the figure. 
17,000. Personal allowance will be zero. Nothing here. Zero. So you see, this is your taxable income. Now, we'll take it. If you see this, all the basic higher and additional is in this category only because it's more than 125, 140. So at basic rate, we are going to take 37,700, which is at 20%. Then to find the higher rate, higher rate category is 125, 140 minus this amount, the difference. This will be taxed at now 40%. Just see. drag it down. Next is additional rate. Even additional rate will fall here. How much? This minus 120, 5, 140. This will be taxed at 45 percent just drag it down next we are going to have savings starting rate you will miss out because 5000 entire 5000 falls in non savings but nil rate ban we are not going to have it because this is higher rate sorry additional rate so nil rate ban is also zero but we are going to have the we are going to save this entire savings at what entire savings income at additional rate okay twenty two three hundred this will be at additional rate now out of this dividend one thousand will be at zero the balance sixteen thousand will be at additional rate Okay, 39.35 and this is your income tax liability. Now moving on to our next question that is illustration 2. Here we have three types of income, pension, savings, dividend. Pension is non-savings and we have to allocate personal allowance in the most beneficial order. So let's quickly do that. Okay. Pension is seven five seventy. Saving is five thousand. And dividend is 13,000. Personal allowance first will deduct from non savings. How much? Minus 7570. The 5,000. See here. If you from 12,570, 7,570 goes for non savings. The balance is 5,000. This 5,000 you can decide whether to deduct from savings first or dividend if you deduct from dividend first remember you can take advantage of the starting rate of savings because entire 5000 will be taxed at zero percent that means only the balance of dividend 12000 will be taxed at basic rate if you deduct the this thing but if you deduct the 5000 from here savings first then you cannot take the advantage of the nil rate band of savings, not the starting date. You can only take the benefit of thousand first thousand of dividend and the balanced dividend will be taxed at basic rate. We'll see the effect of both. First, I'm going to take from savings. I'm going to deduct the balance personal allowance from dividend first. So now this 5000 will be taxed at starting rate. 
zero. Then out of this 8,000, 1,000 at nil rate band and 7,000 will be at basic rate. Okay. 8.75. So what is the total tax? Old is 613. Old is 613. But let me change the scenario. This 5000 now I'll take it from savings first. Nothing here, nothing here. Save okay, one thousand from dividend and the balance twelve thousand will be taxed at basic rate. You see, the tax went up. So taking it from dividend first is most beneficial. Now, last question. Just understanding five. Here also we have employment savings dividend. Allocate personal allowance in the most beneficial order. So let's quickly do that. Just change the figure. 6,800. 4,200 and 12,000. First we'll deduct it from non saving 6800 the balance will take from dividend as you have seen earlier deducting from dividend is most beneficial the balance if you want to find the balance this is the balance. Now the taxable income is this. So now if I have to find the starting rate, okay, where this will be zero, okay, this 4200 will go in the starting rate and will be taxed at zero. Out of this 1000 at zero and the balance 5230 will be taxed at the basic rate. So the total tax is just 458. Taxation of families. How do you tax couples? Each spouse is taxed separately. Civil partners are treated in the same way as spouse. But there are special rules. What if the spouses are having assets that are jointly owned okay so the allocation of income between the spouses where assets are jointly owned how do you transfer the unused personal allowance to your spouse which is known as marriage allowance so in addition married couples they can transfer income generated among themselves to minimize income tax liability it's, it's known as tax planning that they can do for jointly owned assets okay income is generally divided among themselves on a 50 50 ratios okay whatever the actual percentage ownership is income will be 50 50 but if they are held in any other ratio other than 50 50 then you can make an election to the HMRC so that you are taxed based on your percentage that you're holding rather than 50 50 but for jointly held bank accounts remember the split is always 50 50 if it's a jointly held bank accounts where the jointly owned asset is shares in a close company then income is automatically taxed on the individual based on their actual ownership okay for shares in a close company marriage allowance this is like you are transferring a fixed amount of personal allowance to your spouse it's known as marriage allowance remember marriage allowance can only be given 
when none of the spouses are higher or additional rate. Both have to be basically taxpayer, otherwise you can't transfer. So in practice, this this election you can it's beneficial you only make when you have not utilized your personal allowance of 12 570 entirely if you have utilized personal allowance then it's not any benefit to you to elect to transfer your personal allowance you can't if you have not utilized personal allowance of 12 570 entirely then only is beneficial to transfer it to your spouse who needs it now so electing the marriage allowance allows the transfer to the spouse of a fixed amount of personal allowance see it does not matter how much unused personal allowance you have you can only transfer a fixed amount let be less than that you can't no more than that you can transfer only that fixed amount you can transfer which is 1260 this is fixed and you need to remember this amount it's fixed for 2023-24 tax year 1260 so no provision for transferring less than this amount what would be the effect of this election the transferring spouses personal allowance is reduced by the fixed amount of 1260 whoever is transferring their personal allowance will reduce by this and the one who's receiving it what is the benefit of it the one who is receiving the recipient spouse his or her income tax liability will be reduced by a maximum of 252 how take the 20 percent of 1260 so maximum of 252 you can reduce his income tax liability the one who is receiving it this is the effect now transferring spouse or civil partner makes the election anyone can make the election okay the, whoever is going to transfer has to make this election that they are going to transfer how the relief is given by deducting it okay whoever is receiving from the recipient's income tax liability this is a relief why because from his income it's it's an income tax reducer the recipient's own personal allowance is not increased. Remember, whoever is receiving his own personal allowance will not increase. He is still entitled to his 12,570. But from his spouse, he will get a 1,260. Uh, 252, he can reduce his income. If the recipient's income tax liability, let's say, is less than 252. Let's say you have 200, uh, 200 and uh, let's say 100. Your income tax liability is 100 and you are receiving 252. Remember, your there is no tax repayment for that. You are not going to get any tax repayment from the tax authority. But the amount by which the transfer of personnel allowance is reduced will be 1260 only. At best, the relief reduces the recipient's income tax liability to nil. More than that, it can't reduce. In the year of marriage, full allowance will be there. So relief is usually given by adjusting the individual's tax code under payee or through self-assessment if the individual is not employed. Remember, what happens when your unused personal allowance is more or less than 1260? We'll see the scenarios now. It's very important. If one spouse has unused personal allowance more than 1260, Remember, maximum tax saving is 252 only. Provided whoever is receiving it has income tax liability of more than 252. If the spouse has unused personal allowance less than 1260, fixed amount is still 1260 only that you can transfer. You can transfer less than that. However, because you have unused personal allowance less than 1260, your transferring spouse still has to pay some tax. We'll see these two questions. When we do questions with numbers, we'll understand this scenario better. And the maximum total tax saving for the couple will be this. If the question asks you in the exam, what is the maximum total tax saving for the couple? It is this. Whatever is your unused personal allowance into your basic rate income tax. Now, to be effective for the tax year, election can be made in advance. By April 2024, you have to make this election. 
remember once you make this election by 5 april 2024 this election will be there forever in all the future tax years unless you withdraw the election or conditions for relief are no longer met you can make this election in arrears also by latest by 5th april 2028 if you make it by that day this is applicable only within 4 years at the end of tax year that means from 2024 to 2028 it's not there forever so that means in this case election will only apply to your 2023-24 in isolation it will only apply to that one particular tax year but if you make in advance by 5th april 2024 election is forever the taxation of children next even child in uk is taxed on their income right even that is there so they have a separate income tax computation child will get full personal allowance in the year of birth and returns and claims they can be completed by the child's parent or their whoever their guardian is when a child has received taxed income a repayment of tax will probably arise right now how they are taxed so income derived from a source set up by a parent is assessed on the parent not the child remember income derived from a source set up by a parent when it is from the parent income will be assessed on the parent not the child unless the gross income received in the tax is 100 or less if it's 100 or more is on the parent if it's 100 or less is on the child gross income in the tax year and the child is under 18 and unmarried then it's on the child then the child is taxed now where a child under the age of 18 and unmarried has investment income that is derived from capital provided by parent then even in a case of investment income that income is treated as belonging to parent if the parent is still alive rather than the child capital could be provided by like this this is how a parent could provide a capital for the child either by setting up a formal trust or settlement or a gift of money opening a bank account in the child's name or shares now let's do question before we go to the tax planning scenarios so we have three questions to do illustration three test understanding six and seven illustration three let's do marriage allowance okay so here you have to tala makes an election to transfer the marriage allowance to aljays now so they are married aljays is employed and earns a salary of this much tala spends tala earns a salary of six thousand so both of them earns a salary and has no other income and now they make an election who makes an election tala who is having a basic right both are basic because it's less than 37700 that's why they can make this election so tala makes an election to to transfer the marriage allowance to aljays aljays is 73570 tala is having only 6000 that means tala will be having unutilized personal allowance so he can transfer so let's do that open the spreadsheet keep this table here so that whenever we do income tax we'll need it we'll go down here and we'll put ljs a and tala t okay now so income is 37,070 and here he has 6,000 he makes an election personal allowance okay less personal allowance how much he can do 12,570 and here minus 6,000 will up to that limit so taxable income t i Taxable income TI would be 
just do some function. Okay, this. So now, income tax liability ODA has to pay. Remember, A is the recipient. First, you have to calculate the income tax liability of A before we do any transfer or something. So, income tax liability, income tax IL, IDL would be this amount into 20%, basically 4,500. From here, you can take the manage allowance. How much? Less marriage allowance MA. How much? 252 only. So now your income tax liability would be 244248. And here it will be zero for her. Okay. So this is the total. Now, the next question. Touch understanding six. Let us go to that. Here, Katy and Emily are civil partners. Katy is a basic rate and her only source of income is self-employment. Emily is studying and does not utilize her personal allowance. Emily makes an election to transfer the marriage allowance to Katie. So now he, here, under three scenarios, you have to calculate income tax liability of both Katie and Emily. Okay. 30,012, 30, and 11. Okay. So on. let's do. So let's change this name to Katy K and Emily E. Okay. This is 30,000. Here she was having 0. 12,570. This would be 0. Okay. So if you take this, this is 20% of this amount, which is 34,860. This is correct. And he can deduct up to 252. Because the entire amount he, uh, Emily may have transferred to Katy. That's why 252. So this is the income tax liability. If you add, the total is 3 to 34. Because all of the Emily's personal allowances are unused. That's why the end maximum benefit is 252. Understood the logic? Coming to part B. In part B, Katy has 12,850. Done. Emily still has zero and 12,570 and all. But here, if you see, it's only 280. Okay. So if you take 280 and take the income tax is 56. So here, you can't take the marriage allowance to 52. It's becoming minus. Here, then it has to be minus 56. And he's paying no tax liability. Okay. Now what's next? C. Katie is having 30,000. Emily is having 11,750. Done. She is deducting 12,750 and having this 34,860. But remember, when Emily is transferring, because Emily might be having some personal allowances, okay, she can only transfer up to 252, okay. Here you have to check. This is with election, okay, with election. And the other one is without election. You have to check the impact. How much tax you are saving with, that, with election and Okay, so if you make the election, see, 
see you have to do a small working here how much is the basic person allowance 2570 and how much is here that means unused is 820 right unused is 820 but you can only transfer up to 1 to 16 1 to 60 only you can transfer so what is the difference 1 to 60 minus this you need to put an equal sign that means 440 that means the balance you should have is 440 so here you should have 440 balance why because you can transfer up to 1 to 60 but under utilize is 820 That means some portion Emily also has to pay tax. Then only this this could be transferred like this because this is twenty percent of one to sixty. Okay, so the difference this minus this this is the wait a minute. This needs to be in minus. Just wait this way. Equal to this minus this. Okay. Four forty. So if it's four forty, and if you are taking equal to this into eighty-eight. And if you add this together, the total tax would be so three two two. This is with election. Without election, what would be the tax? It would be this three two three four. Ah, uh, wait, no, no, no. It's not this. It would be this. Three four eight six. This is without election. Why? Because you are not getting this minus two fifty four. And here you are not paying any tax because you are entirely removing the here. Then it will be minus eleven seven fifty without election. This would be zero. You are only paying tax on this three four eight six. This is the twenty percent of this. So without election is three four eight six. With election is three two three four. You understand it? So that's the reason. I'm sure one, uh, many of you might still be confused why this was eleven three hundred and ten. Wait, minus eleven three ten, and this was. Four forty, right? Eighty. Many of you might still be confused of this. See, you can here. This is one to sixty into twenty percent. Then only you are getting this two fifty two, right? To make this transfer, he has to has the amount, right? So if you check the difference from twelve five seventy. Eleven seven fifty. If he utilizes the exact amount, the full amount, what is the difference? Eight twenty. That's why from twelve five seventy, if you are taking only eleven, this one, eleven three one ten. Just see what's happening from this personal allowance. You only deduct this one. You see, you are having this amount. That's why we are taking this amount to get this amount. So when we take this amount and when you deduct it from here, eleven seven fifty is four forty. Understanding? Because we want one two sixty after taking personal allowance. 
but if we deduct the entire personal allowance 12,570, we can't take entire personal allowance 12,570 because this amount is less than that. We need a limit to that. If it if it was less than this, you can't transfer. We want at least after deducting it should be 1,260 the balance. That's why. This means Emily still has to pay some tax at this rate. This is the meaning of this. Okay. <coughs> Now, let's do the last question. Test understanding 7. This is a full-fledged question. You can see it has everything. It has salary. It has benefit. It, is, it has employment income. Both are non-savings. Allowable expenses of employment. Bank interest. This is savings. It has building society interest. This is also saving interest from ISA account. Remember, there are some uh, exempt income. This is an exempt income. Then, dominant kid has a son. Math is age 10. Math was given 5,000 of 3.5 gills as a birthday present by kid. This is a child benefit. They have a joint property also, dominant kid. Okay. So the taxable in property income is 4,100. You have to divide this among the two. Now you have to calculate income tax liability. So it has child benefit, it has uh, joint property, it has everything. Exempt income, right? Now, let's quickly do this question. It looks a little bit complicated, but it's not at all complicated. Just follow the process. Okay. So let's quickly do that. Stretch it. Okay. Let's do for Kate. This is also Kate. Both are Kate. So employment income, okay, if you go by employment, this is employment income. I'm not writing the labels, you can do it by yourself, I'm just writing the figure. So if you go to employment income, we'll put in this corner. This is not to get confused. Okay. So for employment income, employment income equals to 41, 5, 550. We have another income of employment that is your salary, 1875. Just check from here. This salary you add with employment income and deduct minus 95. Then we have bank interest, BI. It is savings. We'll put here 2650. Then we have another gill interest. You have to take 3.5% of equal to 3.5% into 5000. This is for the child benefit 175. Because the amount is more than 100. So it does not, it's not, it is taxable on Kate, the parent, not the child. That's right. Even if it is exempt, interest from ISA, you have to make a note, exempt. You have to write it like this. Okay. So, zero. Then you are property income. Remember, you need to divide it by 2. This is only for K, they asked you. It was 4,100. So, equal to 4,100 divided by 2. So, your total income. T, total income, total I. Just calculate the sum function. All this and enter. Round this, go here. Cus, uh, 
cost of all. Okay. This is three point five into five thousand. There is something wrong. This is two one one five. Okay. After this, the sum function. Then we deduct our personal allowances less than hundred. So less the sum function. This is the taxable income. So once we do the taxable income. Now, you need to do since this is not in a column of format. You see, if it was not in a column of format, this becomes very difficult to analyze. You have to analyze it, non-savings and savings. So, property income. What is the non-savings? You have to find there is no dividend, but we have non-savings. We have three non-savings. One is property, one is this. So from here you have to deduct your personal allowance. Okay. So rather than doing it this way, we can use it use a table. We can put this in the table and see. Okay. So employment income forty-three. 330 then bank interest we have two six fifty then we have another two one one five then we have one seventy five do not look at the description Then we have zero. This is exempt. Okay. Then we have property income. Property would be two zero fifty. Okay. Okay. Done. Now we deduct the personal allowance. Okay. Find the total minus twelve five seventy. It of the personal allowance. The 
see now things has become very much easy it is sorted but if you see the answer it was not given in this column of format but this is easier please attempt this always so now we can take the tax this is at the basic rate so it goes to this multiply by this enter they still have some basic rate starting rate is not there but new rate band is there because this is at the little it's 50 more than basic so it falls in the higher so because it's higher new rate band is 500 so this would be zero So out of this 500 goes, then you are remaining with the balance. But still, some of it would be taxed at basic rate, the savings. So you need to know that. How much? Thirty-seven seven hundred minus this. You need to put an equal sign, okay? Minus this and minus 500. 4390 okay 4390 would be taxed at 20% the balance 50 would be taxed at 40 Now the sum. So the total is fourteen eighty. Is income tax. Wait. It is not this. It's from here. from here but there has been a mistake somewhere this is 20 yes it's 7460 this is the income tax liability right Maximizing use of allowances. So, individuals should ensure that they use their personal allowances, number one, and their nil rate band if they have any. For example, increasing your non savings income so that you can utilize your personal allowance fully. Okay, if your savings or dividend income is taxed at 0%. If it's fully taxed at 0%, make sure you increase your non-savings to take advantage of personal allowance. Or, they could do this. How are they going to do this? How are they going to make sure that dividend and savings are taxed entirely at 0%? By withdrawing more from a pension scheme or generating more earned income or property income. So if you earn more earned or property income that means you are earning more non savings income okay if you are withdrawing more from a pension scheme or generating more earned income or property income it will increase your non savings next taking advantage of savings and dividend rate back if they have significant investment income third shareholders of owner managed businesses they may wish to extract 1000 of profit as dividend. Why? Because if you extract 1000 as a dividend, you are going to get the dividend nil rate ban. Advantage of dividend nil rate ban. But if you take your profit as a salary, if you extract it as a salary, 
or bonus, it is going to be less efficient. You are not going to get the advantage of dividend yield rate back. It will be taxed at non-savings rate. It will also be taxed to income tax as well as national insurance contribution NIC you have to pay. Now, for married couples, this is how you have to think. You equalizing income and maximizing the use of nil rate band for both. Next, using tax-free investment. Maximizing pension contribution. Okay, equalization of income. Now, Couples can transfer income generating assets between them. How? At no tax cost so that their joint tax liability reduces. So here they have to utilize both of their personal allowances, both of their starting rate band and both of their savings and dividend in rate band. Also the basic rate band if they can extend for both through personal pension contribution or gifted donation. Next, let's say if one of the couple is a basic rate and the other is a higher or an additional rate, what happens? What should the couple do? Couple should aim to utilize the basic rate taxpayer savings income nil rate band. See, higher or additional, for higher it's 500, the savings nil rate band, and for additional no rate rate band, but the basic rate taxpayer is going to get the thousand. The savings income nil rate band at thousand. So you try to utilize whoever is the basic rate taxpayer, which of the spouse try to utilize his savings income nil rate band of thousand. Okay. Next, the dividend nil rate band is thousand. Doesn't matter whatever your taxable income is. But if one of the couple has a dividend income more than 1000, what should you do? That takes taxpayer may transfer some of the shares to the other. To utilize the other's dividend in return. See, if you are having less than 1000, you don't have to transfer because you can utilize it. First 1000 anyway, it is taxed at 0%. But if it's more than 1000, let's say 2000 is your dividend. So keep 1000 with you because you are going to get the dividend nil rate band the the balance 1000 transfer it to the spouse who is not utilizing his or her dividend nil rate band so this might be possible okay it is also possible to make a marriage allowance election to transfer a fixed amount of personal allowance from one spouse to another yes next it's important to recognize the transfer of the interest in the asset to the spouse. When you're transferring the interest in that asset to a spouse, it should be a genuine gift. Okay. It must be a genuine gift and there is no immediate capital gain tax or inheritance tax on that when you're transferring to your spouse. So now let's do questions. And we have finished this lecture here. We'll do the last two questions before we summarize this lecture. Illustration 4 and test your understanding 8. These are the last two questions of this lecture. So let's quickly do that. So here we have two, Kyria and Spence. They are married. Kyria has an earning income of 2000 and spend 46500 They own a property in joint names. 80% spend, 20% Kyria. A declaration is enforced to support the ownership percentage. Okay. The annual income from the property is 20,000. In addition, they have a joint investment bank account with cash balance of 35,000 that year earns interest of 800 gross per annum. So you need to calculate the taxable income for both. Taxable income for both. Number one. Number two. And advise them of any income tax planning measure they should consider to reduce their liabilities for the future. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Okay, so let's quickly do that. So we are going to have two. This is Kyria. This is Pen. Let's put Pen. Now, earned income. So earned income is 
2000 and 46500 next investment income go back so 2 and 46 is done next what's next remember the investment income this one this 800 so this is from the joint investment bank account joint investment bank account 50 50 no matter what so this 800 is 400 for each okay so here 400 here it's 400 this is the investment income then we have property income this is property income property income is how much property income is 20 this is based on actual percentage so 80 for Spain 20 for Kyria so 20 if you take it will be 4000 and the balance 16,000 is for Spain's okay done just take the total income it is simply the sum of all the three enter drag it to the cell of oh, sorry okay next deduct your personal allowance remember your personal allowance here when you're deducting it has to be up to 6400 only here you can take the entire amount this would be minus And here it's minus 12 570 the entire amount of personal allowance you can deduct again some function okay so this is the taxable income 0 and 50 330 if you see is that a higher rate? He's a higher rate taxpayer. Kyria does not have to pay any tax. So now let's go to tax planning. Taxable income we have done. Tax planning. This tax planning part you have to write in word processor. Okay, here. What are you going to write? What are you going to advise? See, if you are giving them a marriage allowance, please make sure to check their income. Marriage allowance cannot be used. Why? Why? If you see the taxable income, Kyra is 0, Spen is 50, 330. Spen is a higher rate taxpayer. That's why you cannot use the marriage allowance. Marriage to use marriage allowance, both has to be basically taxpayer, both the spouse. Here, one is higher rate, spouse is higher rate. Always, when you can't use an option, even state that, that this cannot be used because, because of this, this, this reason. You are going to get a mark. So, marriage allowance, you can't use. What's next? First, understand the scenario. See from the point of Kyria. Okay, Kyria, if you check the personal allowance, it is restricted. That means Kyria has an unused personal allowance, isn't it? And also, he's a basic rate taxpayer. But Spain is a high rate taxpayer. How much tax is he paying at higher rate? Just take the difference. This and it is check the difference. 5330 minus 37700 and taxi rate 40%. Right? What's next? So, starting from here, okay, he's a higher rate because he's a higher rate and this is a savings income, this 400. Spend will not pay any tax on this 400. On this, 
investment income. Why? Because he's entitled to 500 savings income nil rate bank. This entire 400 will be taxed at 0% because it falls on, it's less than 500, which is the savings income nil rate band. Why savings income nil rate band is 500? Because it's a higher rate. For higher rate is 500, for basic it's 1000, for additional it is 0. Okay. So because already his uh, spends is not being taxed at this, there, therefore there is no benefit in transferring this income to Kyria. Okay. The benefit would only take place if Spen is paying any tax at that amount, but he's not paying. He's being covered under nil rate ban. So no use of transferring it to a Kyria. What's next? You should consider the following. Maybe if you check here, Kyria is just having 20, Spen is 80%. Maybe you can change the ratio. You can change their percentage ownership. Then payments can be made into a pension. If you make the payments into a pension, you can extend your basic rate band. Okay. Now the effect. See. You should also write the effect of this happening. If you do, what do you have advice? What would happen? Let's say you have transferred a larger percentage share to Kyria. What happens? Effect means how much tax you are saving through your tax planning measure. That's what it means. See, let's say Spain is, uh, is now at 80%, okay? And this one is at 20%. So if you're changing this ratio and putting Kate at a, uh, Kyrie at a higher rate, for a higher percentage, that means now, Spain's okay S will save tax at 40%. Okay, he will save tax at 40%. Because if it's at a, if it's a higher rate, he has to pay tax at 40%. Now that 40% tax he does not have to pay, he will save it. And the next benefit is that surplus personal allowance. Okay. Kyria surplus plus personal allowance he can utilize it now the unused personal allowance that has been lost can be now utilized once it is transferred and then the 20 percent basic rate ban you can utilize it next see even with the extra property income okay if you take this extra property income of 4000 this one Kyria will still be a basic rate taxpayer only. And savings, if you check her savings 400, this will be covered by 1000. Savings income nil rate band. Why 1000? Because he's a basic rate taxpayer. If you check his income, he's a basic rate. Zero means basic rate. So this 400 will be anyway covered by 1000. Okay. Next. So what about pension contribution? If you are making any pension contribution, you are going to get a tax relief at 40%. Why? Now you are paying higher rate no? at 40%. Once you make the pension contribution, you can extend your basic rate. That means you will be paying at 20% rather than paying at 40%. So your tax relief will be at 40%. For making pension contribution. This is for Spain. I'm talking about because Spence, this guy is the higher rate. He should get the benefit of paying at a lesser tax or no tax. Coming to test understanding eight, the last question. So here, advise the couple of any beneficial tax planning measure they should take to minimize their combined income tax liability. So you have the employment income, savings, and dividend for both. Okay, so let's quickly do that. Here, they told you advice. They didn't tell you to calculate anything. So when they told you advice, some numbers, some calculation has to be there. That's why figures are given. But you have to more of right. Okay. So please understand. Just looking at the income, roughly a person can 
uh, make an idea you don't have to exactly see calculate and see so if you see the employment income itself is 170000 so sten is an additional to taxpayer and looking at jai 20,003. So it's 23. He's a basic rate taxpayer. Please make sure that you mention the rate that they are paying their tax. So because Stain is an additional rate taxpayer, Stain is not going to get any nil rate ban. Same as nil rate ban is not applicable. So his savings income, you see, his savings income will be subject to additional rate at 45%. Whereas Jai is a basic rate taxpayer and he, because savings is zero, he, he's entitled to 1000 uh, nil rate ban, but it will not be utilized. He cannot utilize. So what happened because he cannot utilize his 1000 nil rate ban? Stan can now transfer this savings to Jai. Stan can transfer out of this 2000 savings he can transfer to jai 1000 why because that 1000 will anyway be deducted will be taxed at zero percent because of nil rate ban and hence will bring down the savings income for 10 so he will save 1000 right so the remaining 1000 if you take out from this and give it to jai Jai's 1000 will be taxed at 0% because of nil rate ban. What about Sten? Sten, the balance 1000 will be taxed at basic rate at 20%. So, what would be the saving? Tell me. You need to understand this very properly. See, this 1000 that was here, you were paying it at 45%, right? I will make this, I'll write it here. Just for this 1000 here, okay? This 1000 was taxed at 45% before okay now because this 1000 has been brought here to savings how much you're saving the difference the difference that you're saving here you are paying 40 jai is a basic rate taxpayer so 20 the difference so it will be plus 1000 into earlier it was 45 percent now it's 20 percent basically the difference so if you do it okay you can use excel or you can use your calculator here if you take 45% of 1000, this is 450. I can write it here. And 25 minus 20 is 25%. So if you take 1000 into 25% would be 250. So 450 plus 250 is 700. So the taxes saving is 700. If you're not understanding this way, then there's another way of understanding this. You have to do it. See, understand the difference. Earlier, 1000 you were paying 2000 at 45 now only 1000 so out of this 1000 into 45 percent is out from here that's a saving with that you add another 1000 okay this 1000 
So the 1000 that has been brought from out from here into this category J would be now taxed at 20% from 45 to 20. So the tax reduced, there's another benefit, the difference in the tax from 45 to 20. So that difference in the tax you want to show. So together it would be 700. Okay, you can calculate and see. Next. So Jai, if you see Jai, out of 3000, 1000, he have utilized completely. So dividend income is in excess of this. Will be taxed at 8.75 basic rate. So because he has zero, whoever is having zero, okay, can't transfer anything. Whoever has more only can transfer. So Jai this time can transfer his dividend to 10. How much? 2000. I'm sorry, 1000. Because this time dividend yield rate man is 1000. I forgot. It's not 2000. So she should transfer shares to 10. That will generate dividend income of 1000. So once this 1000 from here comes this side, it will be again taxed as 0% because of nil rate ban. How much tax will be saved? The tax that would be saved would be 1000 into 8.75%, which is 88. This is the I have rounded up. By the way, it's 88.75. Okay, but understand. Why 1000 into 8.75? See, out of this, if you transfer 1000 to stain, here it's 1000. Let's assume here it's 1000 now. This 1000 will be covered with the new rate band. Here now you have how much? 2000, right? Out of this 2000, 1000 you are going to get dividend new rate band. So this becomes 1000. So this 1000 you are going to pay at the basic rate only. 8.75. So this is the amount of tax you are saving. Why? Because before it was. This was 3. Out of this three, 1000 you are going to get, but you are only, you are going to pay a tax for 2000. If you don't transfer, right? 1000 is dividend rate band. 1000 So from here, 2000 will be charged. But now only 1000. So it went down by 1000. This is the amount of tax you are saving. Try to do it and check by yourself. Let's summarize this lecture. So the tax year is 2023-24, which runs from 6th April 2023 to 5th April 2024. Financial at is 2023 taxable income all taxable income are gross you need to separate into non saving savings and dividend and you need to know the amounts okay basic higher and additional 20 40 45 for non savings and savings dividend is 8.75 33 and 39.35 deduct reliefs then you deduct personal allowance deduct reliefs and personal allowance from the income in the most beneficial order mostly it's non saving savings and dividend but in some circumstances deduct from dividend before deducting from savings exempt income there's a list of exempt income that one must know income from isa nsni savings certificate interest interest on repayment of tax, winnings, some state benefits, allowable deductions, qualifying loan interest, 
it's paid gross deduct gross amount paid in the tax year maximum deduction only you can do okay so the qualifying loan is loan to contribute into a partnership buy shares in a closed company for example uk resident or eea buy shares in an employee control company again uk resident or eea enable an executor to pay inheritance tax on an estate so a loan for this four purpose are known as qualifying loan what is the maximum amount that you can deduct greater of 50000 or 25% of adjusted taxable income adi agar now loss relief okay you can deduct these are allowable deductions then we have royalties you need to treat this as an allowable deduction okay from your trading income copyright royalties are paid gross patent royalties are paid net which is 20% of tax then we have personal allowance which is 12570 for this tax year unused amount is normally lost you can't carry it forward now you can utilize it again capital gain tax you can transfer a fixed portion of personal allowance to your spouse known as marriage allowance but you need to make an election you need to allocate personal allowance in different income types in most beneficial order now when you withdraw the personal allowance you can withdraw this at any age reduce the allowance if your adjusted net income ani is equal to or greater to 100000 so your ani this is how it's calculated net income this net income you must have calculated through the table that pro forma then deduct any gross gift aid or personal pension contribution then ani minus 100000 into 50% that is the amount that you have to reduce it by your personal allowance is nil if your ani is greater than 125 140 now transfer marriage allowance to one spouse if one spouse has an unutilized personal allowance remember if both the spouses are completely utilizing their personal allowance then it does not make sense to transfer marriage allowance right and both spouse needs to be basically a taxpayer otherwise you can't transfer ma fixed amount is 1260 maximum benefit that the recipient spouse will get is 252 how 20% of 1260 is 252 you need to elect for it you can elect by 5th april 2024 or by 5th april 2028 if it's by 5th april 2024 remember this is binding forever until it is revoked or conditions no longer apply but if you Uh, elect by 5th april 2028 that is in arrear it is effective only for the 2023 24 tax year i'm sorry i have mentioned 2024 24 it's 2023 when you get the slide the number will be changed there okay so make sure then taxation of couples couples are taxed separately joint income is 50 50 split unless an election is made to go by the actual percentage ownership but for the joint bank account it's always equal 50 50 for bank interest and unless income from close company shares transfer of unused personal allowance you can consider different ways and asset ownership now taxation of children you tax children when they are under 18 and unmarried income from so set up by a parent is taxed on parent and gross income received is 100 or less then it will be taxed on children so that's it for this lecture thank you for watching and please 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 do not forget to subscribe to my channel because it's because of you people who have subscribed to my channel that my channel has reached to 20 plus k subscriber now and i'm hoping that subscribers will keep growing and i will be coming up with beautiful lectures like this so see you in my next lecture till then make sure 
that you subscribe to my channel share the content with your friends and keep watching